Welcome to the Focal Point. Appreciate you all coming out. Ben was supposed to be here last year, and through a strange bunch of events um, on a Google calendar that messed us up, we had two people booked for the same night. And we, um, we weighed the options, and the other group was coming from Ireland. And Ben's coming from Springfield. So we said, oh, okay, I think we're going to, anyway. So we missed Ben last year. He's back this year, and he's going to be twice as good. So um, he's got with him tonight, um, Vanessa Lively is with him. Um, she is going to come out and perform a few songs in the beginning. Uh, both of them will be out here. Um, but uh, they're going to do a couple of her songs, three or four of her songs. And then Ben will start doing some of his songs. So. There will be a break, short break in the middle. If you'd like to go back and uh, talk to them at the merch table, they'll be back there. And uh, of course, at the end of the show, they'll be back there too as well. So if you would, put your hands together for Ben Bedford and Vanessa Lively. One of us should break our leg for sympathy. I mean, y'all are always saying, break a leg, break a leg. We did it. And I was like, fine, I'll do it. It's not going to be my leg. I'll do it <laughs> for the best of all of us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so I will have my leg elevated the entire show. Hope that doesn't bother anyone. It bothers me, but... <laughs> No one else, hopefully, is bothered by it. Oh, um, I'm going to do a song that Ben and I actually just recorded. I finished this when my leg was up above my heart for weeks, and um, a friend of mine named Colin Brooks in Austin came, and, and we were working on a song together that I had started months back. And then when Ben came to visit and helped ca take care of me not too long ago, like two-ish, three weeks ago or something, yeah. Um, we all went into the studio and recorded this song that we're about to sing, and it's called Canaries. Um, and Ben plays the banjo on it, so he's going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so here's Canaries.
This is, this is my first time at the Focal Point, and it's a beautiful venue. I love it. I know Ben is a regular here, or I mean, not, you know, he's, he's played here a few times, but this is definitely my first time to see this beautiful space, and I, I just love listening rooms like this, and so I'm grateful that, that all the people that run these kinds of venues um, put so much love and heart into it. Uh, we're going to do just a few more of my songs, and um, this next one is called Skylark. I am a Skylark, and it's on my most recent record. Um, and Ben and I played a, a number of shows together in October in Austin, um, which is kind of when we started to really play You're around from with, with. And I'm from Austin, yeah. And, and Ben's starting to play a lot more regularly in Austin uh, now that he comes to visit regularly, and then we just book a bunch of shows around our visits. Now that visits. I have a house there. Now that you have a house right in the heart of the city, yeah. can't deny coming all the time. Um, and I have a house in Springfield now. <laughs> <laughs> My children are, are here in Springfield. Or, well, we're, we're not in Springfield, but um, they're nearby. Uh, and uh, Ben was like, you guys have two houses or three. And they were like, no, you, you all have three houses. And they were like, actually, we have, I don't know. They were like, six houses. And they started to name basically every house that we went to. And they were like, it's their house. <laughs> Children are so funny. We're kind of all like them. So we're pretending we've got lots of houses, too. But the biggest homeowner is what? Your cat, Gordito? Oh, yes. Who Darwin he also, the cat, yeah. He, you were like, no, Darwin owns this house. Yeah. And they were like, what? He's a cat. Yeah. <laughs> I am here to serve his every whim. I had to ask permission to use a yellow bowl the other day from the cat. It's his. Like, can I use your bowl, Darwin? Yes, great, thank you. <laughs> it's funny. Oh, <laughs> that's right. How funny. He has many names. Gordito is his latest name. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Little fat man. I love it. Okay, here, here is I Am A Skylark. Is it fortune telling me these faults? I stand here, cast aside. I've come out of hell, sticky like summer, a crystal haze of lovers. My trap was dark, the stars foreboding. You and me are falling. up from this dark fortress I was barren like a dying sinner you like me were in hell vile elusive yet vindicated the walls came falling down only silence was left for sound light broke through my heart broke too forgiveness like the summer sun to you out there Feast awaiting, I'm here for the giving. I was lost within these sands, but I have run faster than flying.
Vanessa Lively. Thank you. I found her backstage and yeah. I, I asked her if she wanted to sing with me. And then I asked her if she wanted to be my girlfriend and she was like, was yeah, like, I'm both, sure, you're cute. I'm both counts. Yeah. So I was like, that's, well, Why that was not? easy. And cool. I also said I'd play the banjo and I don't do that either. Yeah. Why not, right? So, I mean, you fall out of ceilings and your whole perspective win -win changes. Win-win situation, yeah. It's like, I'll do anything. <laughs> Life is short. <laughs> But thank you very much, everybody, for being here tonight. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you. January again. Um, so thanks for braving the cold. And uh, so, yeah, we're going to do a couple more of Vanessa's songs. Then we're going to take a short break. And, um, and then we're going to come back and we're going to play the, the new album, um, Valley of Stars, in its entirety. <laughs> and, uh, you know... Weave the story, hopefully take you on a little uh, quadrupedic adventure with hair, the magnificent. <laughs> so, Your yeah. hair is magnificent. Too. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. How many times do people think you're talking about your hair when you talk about That's a good food? question. I usually the say journey of the hair. A journey of the hair, yeah. We have so much of it. Uh, H-A-R-E hair, yes. yes. The whole time I thought you were talking about your hair. I come here alone and unguarded, the walls come down as I leave behind my lair. Casing falls, outpours my joy with the ceiling of stars. Oh, let the earth and grass be my hair. My past is the grain. In this sober town, so many lies. Truth is, I am found. Mm -hmm. I saw as I say, I'm sorry. Tug on my heart, I'm beneath them again. But now I'm the paper, he's the tree. My past is the grain in this sober town with so many lies. Truth is, I am found.
Thank you. Oh, yeah, banjo. Oh. Well, I've got one more for y'all, and then we're going to um, take that quick break. But, uh, yeah, what a pleasure to, to come. It was a bit of a surprise, too, to do this. Ben's parents offered to hang out with my kiddos, and I was like, why don't you go over to the focal point? <laughs> so it's nice to, nice to be here and nice to get to play with, with Ben and for you guys. So this is a song that I wrote during the pandemic. Um, it was written on a piano. And uh, <clears throat> it was, I, I had actually been separated for a little while and then um, this all happened pre-pandemic and then got divorced right at the start of the pandemic and moved my children and myself into a home with almost no help at all and was going through one of the hardest chapters of my life with no friends by my side and not even I couldn't even see my parents at the time and uh, I started hugging the trees in my yard because I needed hugs and um, I started actually talking to my plants I'm like a plant person but I was like checking in on the plants and how are y'all today and like petting them and anyhow that's what you do when you're very very lonely and sad um sometimes and I wrote this song it's in Spanish it's called Besando la Tierra and um I had been doing these nightly piano meditations after I put my children to bed I would just go sit at the piano and and uh, just play around quietly and it would just sort of be like this kind of calming practice for myself and out of that meditative piano practice and and between that and hugging trees and talking to plants and all this listening to birds like just basically who's the Disney character that like hangs out and talks to all the birds Snow White yeah I think I was kind of like embodying her vibe um, I uh, I wrote this song as a love song to the earth um, and and also just asking, I felt like I wanted to foster a relationship, like a loving relationship with the earth and the natural world around me. And, um, and I wrote this love song, uh, meditative love song to the earth. Um, very simple and, uh, and um, yeah, and just to feel held. And so that's just the explanation for those of you that might not understand the words that I'm saying in Spanish. Um, but uh, so here's Besando la Tierra. Let me let me really quick fine oh, yeah. tune here. It just needs. Absolutely, take your time. It's not minor, see? You it's gotta not ask, minor. You gotta okay, ask major me. four. Major four. Those were the notes Sorry. that I forgot to say. Major four, Ben. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You're welcome. I can't keep track of There's, just normal stuff. I think stuff, we, we retune the banjo every single time we play it. It's like a different... E even if we weren't Yeah, thanks a lot, it, you two. <gasps> On the way here, we were like having a love fest for the banjo. Then we were like, I love playing the banjo. Me too. It's magical. I know. Like, that was the conversation. It is magical. How do you feel now? The tuning is, is, is a song in and of itself. <laughs> Just embrace it, y'all. Close your eyes. D. Okay. All right. That's, that's going to be good. All right. It's going to be great. Thank you for your patience. Escuchando 
Thank you very much. We will uh, be back shortly, very shortly. Very shortly. Don't go away. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to turn this back over to uh, Ben and the Stormtrooper footwear. There. <laughs> what do you call my? You call it my Saturn boot or Saturn something? Boot, my yeah. Saturn yeah. boot. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, it's it's really kind of funny because on the video is this bright is that all we white see? foot is a there, giant yeah. white foot with a but it's giant nice it's nice it's is good. it nice I think maybe we could you have should draped get a, it with some sort of curtain we could have we could have get black black gaff tape or yeah or or just get another one on on the other foot and it's just a fashion tape yeah. <laughs> it's just so. like check out my cool boots <laughs> yeah. yep yeah yep anyway I'll turn it back over to them thank you. Thanks, Jeff. 
Thanks for sticking around, everybody, <laughs> through the short break. So um, we're going to play, play the album. It's called Valley of Stars. So um, sit back and relax or whatever floats your boat at the moment. And hopefully we'll take you on a magical little journey um, with Hare, H-A-R-E, wow. as the protagonist. Um, and uh, Hare, Hare, the adventure begins with Hare <clears throat> sitting upon his little hilltop, and he's looking out at the world, and um, he decides he, uh, he wants to get out there and find his friends. <clears throat> so that's how it begins. Um, and this is called Leaping.
Thank you very much. <clears throat> so, um, so hair adventures out. And um, he's going to encounter a bunch of different creatures on his journey here. And the first creature, creatures that he encounters um, are the wolves. He encounters a pack of wolves from a sa safe distance, I might, might mention. He's in no um, immediate physical danger. But from a little ridge, he watches a, a pack of wolves chasing after a deer. <clears throat> and he thinks, what a strange world this is. And the wolves are howling at the moon. Snow 
all so red we cried to see it Paint the earth the dark moon said With pigment from your billowed breath feature an Asita on the banjo. Well, you, he said in order to be his girlfriend, I had to do two things, and that was sing and play banjo, sing right? Sing and play banjo. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm willing to try. So here it goes. <laughs> They're relatively simple you relatively know, requirements. Simple. Yeah. yeah. I think you taught me like one chord a couple years ago or something. Right? <laughs> That's right. I, I forgot that chord. One chord in an open tuning. Yeah. Yeah. I did learn that one chord. A special right? thanks to my sister Georgia and my brother-in-law, Taylor, for giving me this banjo for an early birthday present last year. So cool. So I noticed some of you aren't clapping. <laughs> Why did you give him that banjo? <laughs> no angry mobs, yeah. So, uh, hair, it was a safe distance, but nonetheless, there are still wolves, and, you know, they're still a bit scary. And um, he decides that he's going to make a run for the river. And that's, this next tune is called Dark Flight. And I should mention, too, I got kind of, during the, during the lockdown um, and during the pandemic in general, I got kind of obsessed with uh, odd time signatures. And so... Um, this next one's in maybe the, the least odd of, of odd time signatures, possibly, I suppose. Um, unless 3-4 is considered an odd time signature, which I don't, no. I don't think of it as an odd time signature, although 3 is an odd number. But anyway, 5-4, um, possibly the least odd of the odd time signatures. Um, and the intro to the last tune was in 5-4. Um, and uh, the little interlude in the first tune was in 7-4 with a bar of 6 at the end to sort of pull it together. Just in case you were wondering <laughs> and you felt like I did something wrong as you were tapping. <laughs> it was you who did something wrong. That's right, shame the audience. Yeah, that's right, okay. <laughs> so this is, called, this is called Dark Flight. I know what I'm doing. I can't make any mistakes on my own songs. No. Oh. That's why I don't play other people's songs. I don't make any mistakes. All right. <laughs>
<laughs> Vanessa Lively Yay. on the banjo. Can I be your girlfriend? Yes, you can be my girlfriend. Fantastic. Yes, fantastic. All right. Phew. You pass. Hard, hard bargain you drive here. I gotta learn to play this crazy instrument. <laughs> I have to say, the banjo, I mean, yeah. It's, you know... It's fun. For those of you who have not tried to play the banjo before, it's seriously... Watch out, it's addictive. It's seriously <laughs> addictive. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And when I hit a wrong note, Ben yells at me and goes, Own it! Own it! Own it! And I'm like, what? Yeah, there Own are it. no wrong notes. Play it more! <laughs> yeah. Like the bad note. Exactly. Play that note more. Lean into it. Lean into it. Yeah. He's a great teacher. I meant to do it. Yeah, there are no wrong notes. There's only notes you mean to play and notes you don't mean to play. And if you mean to play all of them, they're the, all the right notes. Yeah. So. <laughs> so Hare makes it to the river, safe and sound, and he feels elated to be there. You know, like, um, have you ever, like, almost gotten to a, a wreck on the interstate, but you didn't? And then everything for the next, like, 10 minutes is hilarious? That's kind of how he feels, yeah. Like, oh, I'm alive. This is great. And uh, this is called Murmurations. I'll pick on Dave again. Dave's over here. But uh, I think I, the first time I ever played this song, um, the last verse, I, I say, uh, I want to sing like a starling. And, and my friend Dave over here said, a starling? You don't want to sing like a starling. I was like, no, I do. I want to sing like a starling. I want to like steal a little bit from everywhere, you know, and blend it all together and something, if not new, at least, you know, unusual. Full of interesting notes and uh, that I meant to play. Yeah, exactly, exactly. In Georgia, I think I actually, um, I, I got the idea for the, the Starling after reading Mozart's Starling, which you gave me. And um, I don't know if anybody's read the book Mar Mozart's Starling. It's, yeah, it is a great book. Highly recommend it. Um, yeah, uh, Starlings, of course, are um, technically speaking an invasive species in North America. Um, uh, and, you know, people always say, like, oh, you can't have an eagle feather or an owl feather or whatever, but um, there's actually laws protecting um, the feathers of uh, all native songbirds and uh, nests and all that stuff. You're technically not supposed to have any of that stuff. On the other hand, starlings being an invasive species, uh, you can do basically whatever you want. You can, <laughs> you can shoot them. I'm not advocating that. If, um, uh, you can you know, steal them from their nests, nest as babies and dress them in strange clothing. That's completely legal. Um, not saying I've done any of that, but, um, <laughs> but in the book, the author does, you know, for lack of a um, kinder, gentler word, abducts a, a baby starling and raises it because apparently Mozart, uh, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, had a starling as a pet in the 1790s. And as the story goes, he went into a bird shop and the, the, um, the starling uh, and was singing one of his pieces to him, um, <laughs> which is probably not true. Um, as, it, as she mentions in the, in the book, it's probably the other way around. He saw the starling and then the starling went to live with him. And then, you know, because a starling can pick up um, they they steal from everywhere. They steal, you know, they can mimic the sound of uh, people's voices and they can say, you know, human language words, uh, but they can also um, mimic the sound of a car alarm or a blender or, or all kinds of stuff. Uh, besides just have a really kind of not so great singing voice in general, as Dave mentioned. Um, uh, yeah, anyway. Um, I have to say, there's one more thing that I found extremely intriguing about the, the book, Mozart's Starling, and that was Mozart's sense of humor 
because there's excerpts, of course, from the German um, of him writing back to his father and to his sister. And they had the strangest sense of humor, but I don't know, I thought it was funny. I'm sure um, Jeremiah and Nico, who are eight and six years old, would also That's find funny. it funny. But like, um, they had like the very uh, explicit potty humor. They would sign off their letters, something to the effect of like Mozart would be writing to his sister or vice versa, and, and one of them would say to the other, I hope you shit the bed tonight. <laughs> Lovingly, your sister, or whatever. Which I don't, you know, or may you shit the bed 20 times next week. <laughs> See you at Christmas. I don't know what that was about, but I thought it was kind of funny. So take that for what it's worth. <laughs> and their father joined in too, so it was, you know, it was a family thing. Anyway. Maybe it's a Starling thing. Could be a Starling thing. <laughs> so this is called Murmurations. All the time that I need There's No reason to ask why The dance of the yellow star Sounds like murmuring bees I Want to run in the sunshine Sleep by the river on a bed of rain riven mud. The blazing stars they stand and they shiver. The silver trees drink green river blood. I want to sleep by the river I want to burn in the night I want to sing like the starling From here and a little from there and Blend with the bees and the whirring The iridescent green through my hair I want to sing like the starling Thank you. As he's uh, hopping along the river, he notices his friend Leopard. 
sitting along the bank and uh, Leopard is especially sad and feeling quite uh, quite down and um, the world is just not the way he would like it to be and uh, Hare sits and listens to his lament <clears throat> Leopard sat beneath Sky. And watch the amber world go by. A sparrow flitting through the azure glow. Leopard had no place to go. He called upon his friend. Street from here to there. The colors of the universe, the prism of the eye, leopard set beneath the sky. Leopard set beneath the sky. down first though. Oh good. So you've got a little time. Thank goodness. So So Hare decides that uh, he w would like to cheer his friend Leopard up. So he decides to um, run up and down the hillside as fast as he can. Which seems, you know, to be a, a sort of joyful thing. Um, I, as far as I can remember, as far as I know, um, I've only seen a, I've only seen a European hare one time. I was, um, I was on a walk in the south of the Netherlands, um, outside of a little village called Vlierden, and it was a lovely, it was March, if I remember right, um, like late March, early spring. And uh, I was walking along this like lovely little um, path through some fields along a picturesque little um, canal, and I came around this corner, and there was this you know huge 
what looked to me like a huge animal sitting in the <laughs> in the path, especially you know when you're used to like eastern cottontail rabbits. Um, this thing was like this tall in my in my memory. It's probably more like that, but but nonetheless, it was it was huge in my in my memory and 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 uh, in my from my perspective. And um, as soon as it saw me, it took off across the field. And I've never seen anything move so fast under its own propulsion. Um, and I was actually I was playing a uh, I was playing a concert in. Um, where was I? I was in Alabama, Huntsville. I was in Huntsville, Alabama, and there were quite a few um, scientists of, of various sorts at the concert. And this one guy started talking about hares. <clears throat> you know how uh, um, a cheetah, of course, is the the fastest uh, land animal. Um, I was like, well, I, I feel like if you blew a, a a hair up to the size of a cheetah, or you shrunk a cheetah to the size of a hair. And they ran a race like the cheetah would totally blow the, or uh, the, the hair would totally j blow the cheetah away. And he was like, yeah, you're right. And I can't remember, don't quote me on these numbers, but, um, but a cheetah d does something like adjusted for, um, so, you know, it does over 60 miles per hour in pure um, distance and speed, but it does something like, seven, if I can remember right, five or seven body lengths per second um, to achieve that speed. Whereas a hair does like something like 14 or 16 body lengths per second. So if they were the same size, a hair would be way faster, actually, <laughs> than a cheetah. And actually, the thing that I found even more interesting, now this is all from a, some scientist guy in Huntsville, Alabama. So take it, you know, don't take it as the, you know, Fact check it, maybe. Yeah, yeah. There's no science in Alabama. <laughs> the, th the thing that I found the most interesting, though, this guy said that um, apparently uh, a cheetah takes like two body lengths to change direction, um, and a hare can change in zero body lengths. So a hare can be going, whatever, 14 body lengths per second, and then it can be going the complete opposite 180 degree direction, 14 body lengths per second, <laughs> using no distance to make that change. Which that's pretty crazy. So the, it's a like a pogo stick, yeah, basically. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, and just just to further, you know, gross you out. Um, <laughs> uh, apparently, the fastest animal on Earth. Um, by pure, like, you know, just body length per second is a, um, is a kind of mite. And it can do something like 287 body lengths per second. Um, this thing is, like, microscopic in size, and it actually travels at something like four miles per hour. So that's kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Anyway, I'm going to play this song now. It's called Hair on the Down, and... Uh, I was trying to that capture was it was I was trying to capture that might like speed, yeah, or hair like, you know. <laughs> this is called Hair on the Down.
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I need some water. Um, so, uh, hair runs so fast, in fact, that at the bottom of the hill, in an attempt to cheer up his friend Leopard, he runs straight into the forest at the bottom of the hill, and it happens to be Bear's forest. And Bear is king of the wood, and um, he greets Hare proudly, but politely. And uh, before he knows it, Hare is part of a uh, sort of a courtly dance spinning below the yellow leaves. This is called Hair on the Down, and I am going to make sure I'm in tune. Or excuse me, this in is called the In the Court of the Bear. I just played Hair on the Down. My brain is slightly addled <laughs> at all times. Sometimes more than others. Okay. Um, yes, this is called In the Court of the Bear. Thank you very much. Hare would love to stay and dance forever, but 
He wants to continue on and see the world. And so he leaves the dance and trudges farther into the forest. And soon uh, he runs into an adder and he accidentally steps upon the adder and the adder bites him.
Thank you. So after he's bitten by adder, he feels very sleepy. And he lies down on the forest floor. And he has very strange dreams. <clears throat> Thank you. So he doesn't die. I should mention that, too. He does not die. Just has a nice little nap. Um, but as soon as he has his little nap and gets up and starts moving along, he encounters four more individuals that think he looked delicious. Weasel, pike, fox, and kite. And now is as good a time to mention, too, um, Jeff very kindly said that I will be back at the merch table um, after the show is over. Um, so please do come back. And I know, like, I've seen several of you out there that I want to say hello to. Um, but I have not yet done so. So please don't leave uh, without uh, coming and stopping by and saying hi. Um, but I also have, besides, of course, the, um, the new 
the new uh, album over there. I also have some um, small, I'm calling them miniature paintings um, that I have for sale um, with lyrics from the songs on the album. And for whatever reason, a lot of them have lyrics from this song, which is called Weasel Pike, Fox and Kite. And um, yeah, they're little, they're little watercolors. So I've been doing quite a bit of painting and drawing lately. And my friend Stacy, who is out there somewhere, there she is, uh, said I should bring some with me. And I was like, that's a good idea. So, so they're just, they're, you know, I have some bigger, uh, some bigger pieces over there as well. Um, but the little ones are very small and affordable. So, if you want something from the evening, I don't have t-shirts, so I sell paintings instead. <laughs> uh, I'm almost there, tuning-wise. But if you don't have the CD, um, the new CD, please come over and check it out. Um, I know there's a couple of uh, Kickstarter individuals in the in the audience too, so um, I have your stuff. This one's a nine eight, by the way. Whispers in the dell. Fa la 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 la. But I sing a traveling tune, but my feet are faster still. Fa la 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 la. Well, Pike swims in the stream with ribbon teeth to tear. La 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 la. la. But I shall leave the green and the darkened waters there. La 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 la. la. Fox, she stalks the ferns with sallow, slavering eye. Fa la 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 la. But I have tricks I've learned that she has yet to spy. Fa la 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 la.
thank you very much. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming out tonight. Um, Hare comes around the bend. He makes it through the gauntlet of predators, and he comes around the bend, and he sees a beautiful golden light emanating from the hillside, and uh, he approaches, and it's Badger's burrow, and uh, Badger welcomes him in, and offers him some tea and dinner and uh, a nice warm place to sleep. And as he's falling asleep that night, he uh, looks out and the snow is softly falling. And there the, the curtain falls upon the album. So this, uh, this last tune is called In the Shelter of Indomitable Mama Badger. Just me tuning, actually, still. <laughs> so great. This is such a peaceful, euphonious song. So thanks again, everybody. Um, please come say hi to us in the back. And um, I should mention that Vanessa has... Uh, some music for sale back there as well. So some of you may, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Some of you may have all of my music, but there's, you know, there's an opportunity to buy some of Vanessa's. So. Thank you very much for coming on this little journey with us. Thank you very much. <laughs> Vanessa Lively on guitar and banjo and voice. Thank you. And Mr. Ben Bedford. What a beautiful album. Do you want to do Dirty Bats? I said, huh? Dirty Bats? Kind of. You guys want to hear one more that didn't make it onto the album? Yeah. All right. Bats. Is it open? It is open. I think I remember what I do, but I don't for sure. But it doesn't so maybe this is, good. if there's going to be a Valley of Stars part two, this will probably be, you know, 
on it. Do you remember? Do you remember it? No, but let's just do it. Good, all right. I mean, I, I'll sing with you. Great. And we'll see what happens the yeah. rest of the way. <laughs> this is called Bats. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Hopefully see you at the back of the room. <laughs>